The work of Jewish Federation has always been important, but now more than ever, what you do is critical. Your leadership enriches our country's moral fabric, and as we just heard, the world's moral fabric, by adding the deep-rooted Jewish traditions of community, tzedakah, tikkun olam, and helping those who are in need. What we've also learned as a family is that our long history as Jews gives us a unique perspective and ability to unite in the face of serious challenges to our country and to Israel. This is what has sustained us as a people throughout the ages. And now more than ever, as Israel and America face dire existential threats from the outside, it's what must continue to sustain us now. My message to you today is simply this. We must answer our enemy's dangerous resurgence with renewed vigilance, lest we invite greater dangers for both Israel and the United States. How late is it when we ask to open discussions with Ahmadinejad, the man holding the gun with which he vows to kill Israel and the Jews? Each day that passes brings us one step closer to his possession of a nuclear bomb, the ultimate weapon. Have we not been down this road before? When we dally and fret, and wring our hands, but fail to do anything that will really stop him, how late are we then? Where is our outrage at the world's growing acceptance of Hugo Chavez, who welcomes the Iranians to Caracas, then denounces Israel as an evil to be destroyed, and simultaneously badgers and persecutes the Venezuelan Jewish community? Why are we silent? If we close our eyes to this, it is certainly too late. The case I press before you today is not a Jewish cause or an Israeli issue. These are challenges to America. Israel's security is synonymous with our own. The people who point guns at her with murder in their eyes will next turn on us. Her enemies are our enemies, and polite silence amounts to complic complicity in our own demise. The urgency for us is to discard ideologies, to look at the real world and let that dictate policy. In Israel's tough neighborhood, only strength is admired and weakness only despised. In its 61st year, the State of Israel, always supported by the nurturing hand of America and decent right-minded people everywhere, is now in dire straits, mortal danger. Expedience has sadly weakened certain old and reliable allies. The infection has overwhelmed the so-called United Nations and has even reached our universities and too much of our media. In Europe and even here in Washington, leaders of the Palestinian Authority are gaining support for a potential bid to unilaterally declare statehood even without having to recognize the Jewish state of Israel. To the resounding voice of history, let us all lend an ear. Let us resist the complacency that comes with past success. Federation has always been in the forefront of our people's struggle, and you must continue the fight. I and millions like us of many faiths, cultures, and political persuasions await your leadership before it is too late. Thank you very much.